Welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron. I am a retired New York City police detective with 20 plus years of law enforcement. And joining me is my co-host, Ed Wallace. Everybody knows and loves him. 20 plus years in the crime scene unit. Uh, not all of his 20 years, but 20 plus years in the NYPD. Retired from the crime scene unit. And um, you guys all know and love him. So thank you for joining um, thank you to the replay viewers, the channel members, the Patreon supporters, everyone who positively interacts, me, uh, myself and I, uh, and also Ed included now in this. We greatly appreciate your positive interaction in the comments section. You guys are a true asset to our true crime community. Crime Time with Duty Ron continues to grow because of the great folks like yourselves that come in and interact with myself and Ed and all of our guests that come on. Yeah, uh, Ed, how are you doing today? You still... Doing good, doing good, Ron, and yourself? Good, good, not too bad. Thanks for asking. Uh, right. My head is healing up. I'm getting better. Uh, it, it, every day it starts to get a little bit better. I'm, I'm not wearing a hat because it, wearing a hat annoys it a little bit for me. But uh, I, I figured I'd give uh, I give some people a look at my bandages, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. So today we're going to talk about uh, the uh, Brian Laundry, the continued. Um, uh, look at his remains uh, recovered. We're going to also talk about Gabby Petito, uh, Summer Wells, and our boys, Orrin and Orson West from Bakersfield. We're going to talk about all three of those cases because there's movement in all three of them. Um, but let me just say first, thank you to Meg Lowe for being a channel member, a Patreon supporter, and a great friend. Uh, I am victorious is here. Jen Lowe, Meg Lowe, Jen Lowe, moderators, Patreons, channels channel members and you guys are great uh by a show of hands here in the chat before we show you a little bit of media who was able to see two days ago i made an appearance on a charity live stream on popped corn planet uh andy invited myself um he actually asked me if ed wanted to come and i just said listen i want to make it as simple as i can and i did have I did have um technical <laughs> difficulties i was on my phone and i was using zoom and i said if I imagine if me and Ed came, it would have been a, 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 a circus. Mm. So um, I just I I was honored to go on and and do it for charity. We made uh, over a thousand dollars of donations from Crime Time with Duty Ron to um, the woman battered woman shelter in Tampa. Uh, it was a great live stream. Uh, I was a, I was honored to be a part of it. Um, JB from WFLA now was on there. Brian Inton made a, uh, I think, a, a pre-recorded uh, appearance. And also Beth, uh, Jen, uh, from uh, Red, White, and Bethune, and her husband um, made an appearance on there. And it was a great, great day. Um, he, he streamed for six hours and raised $44,000. So um, it's just unbelievable to see YouTube and the true crime uh, creators and community and, and folks like yourself who donated tara says i donated thank you tara for that very um, nice yeah you know, you know when you can give to a charitable organization like uh anything that is behind a domestic violence shelter and things of that nature i, I gotta say you know i'm happy to be a part of it and we donated on behalf of all of you not just myself it was everybody between myself and ed we were honored to make that one thousand dollar donation Actually, I sent a total of fifteen hundred because I didn't want recognition. I kept sending five hundred dollar pieces, and then the last one I sent anonymous. So um, Andy saw it; he thanked me for it. Uh, but it was we were, I wasn't looking to win a prize. I was looking to um, donate to a good cause. So I felt it was great. We spoke about the Moab uh, the Moab uh, police um, interaction with uh, Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry. I gave uh, the best that I could. Uh, in a short period of time, we only had 15 minutes. So um, I think it was a really great, um, it was a great thing. I felt really good about it afterwards. So, um, so yeah, you know, um, many, many celebrities came on there. There was many uh, folks that joined him and, and a lot of content creators that I never even knew of. Uh, a, a couple of gals from the UK. Um, and, and it was just great. It was just great to be there. And anytime that there's some type of charitable event, and I know Ed's the same way, we always come out. When there was a 1013, as we called it, it was um, when a cop or his family needed assistance, I was always like right, right there ready to donate money. So, um, again, 
you know, that that is still ongoing. I'll link it down below so you can go and donate to that um, event. It's a Tampa shelter. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but it doesn't matter because it's it's there. If you go on to Popcorn Planet, I'll link it down below in the description when we're done. You'll get to see it. Uh, it was great. But I do plan to do something here for the Gabby Petito Foundation and also a local shelter here and in California. So I'm going to do like at least two or maybe even three uh, charitable live streams where all of the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds will go straight to the Gabby Petito Foundation. And then I'll do a separate one for a battered woman's shelter or a domestic violence shelter here in New York, and then one on the West Coast. Uh, and if those go well, um, we'll continue to try to do those during the course of the year because I love to give back all the, you know, all the time, all day, every day. I love to give back. Uh, so it's, I thought it was a really, really wonderful thing to be a part of. And it wasn't just me being there. It was all of us. I represented all of the crime time with Duty Ron family. So thank you to everybody for the generosity. Um, Ed, let's jump into the canine search. A lot of people are, you know, there, a lot of people are talking about a lot of aspects of, of Brian Laundry and the recovery. But what I hear most in the Twitter sphere and on social media, uh, whether it be TikTok, Facebook, uh, YouTube, it doesn't matter, you know, fake book, people are, are kind of putting down the canines and the handlers. And I just got off the phone with Brian. Brian Smith is from the Oklahoma Search and Rescue. Uh, he has been a, 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 a guest on this show. He searches with Equisearch Midwest. And we spoke about quite a few things um, when it comes to canines and, the, and their handlers. Um, I think the most important part, we just lost Ed. I don't know if he just clicked out by mistake, which he probably did, but I was going to get Ed's take on it, but I'm going to show you just a little bit of media coming from uh, mid-October for the search for Brian Laundry. And this is some canines on the ground searching for him. And they weren't far from the remains of where he was found. So let's let's let this roll and you guys can see a bit of this. I have the sound muted purposely. So as you can see, there is a canine handler and there's three other officers tailing behind. Maybe those are spotters or they have eyes. There's water to the right and they have their dog off the leash. This is a cadaver dog uh, searching for human remains. And they were not too far from the spot where they um, recovered um, parts of brian laundry's remains uh ed just came back i'm sure he just hit the um he, he probably hit knocked himself off by mistake but it's good that he is back um so let's add ed ed welcome back ed i'm back so, so showing this overview from chopper 13 from fox 13 uh mid mid-october i think it was like the 15th or the 14th um they were close the remains but i talked to brian about this a dangerous situation you're in alligator alley uh not necessarily that location but there's alligators everywhere on this path and you got a dog here on the right on our right of our screen some people might be on the left but you see the black dog in the middle you want to talk just a tad bit about some of the dangers of this and how really dangerous this is not just for the the, the handler but the dog really oh absolutely uh you know Then they I don't know what Hello? Yeah, yeah, I got you now. I got you oh, now. Okay. Yeah. But uh, we all know the stories coming out of Florida uh, about uh, people walking their dogs along bodies of water in Florida, and the alligators are so stealthy, they're just lying in wait, and they pop out and take these dogs. So. Yeah, I want to. I'm going to stop this right here too. Um, you and I both noticed this when we were when we were watching this footage. As you could see, there's a cross there. Um, right out in public view, uh, right off the path. So, um, you know, most of the times when you see crosses like that, it's a, it's a spot where someone lost a loved one. Uh, Mimi Viz, thank you for the $20 super chat. She says, thank you for the great work you do. Thank you for being a great friend and 
a major contributor to Crime Time with Duty Ron. Thank you, Mimi Viz. I, I love and respect you. But yeah, so we see how dangerous this is for the dogs to be off the leash. Um, and in this area, a snake, any kind of uh, wa- piece of wildlife, an alligator can grab um, these dogs and, and they'll be done. It'll be gone. Or a boar could charge. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we spoke with Brian, Brian Smith, um, cane, professional canine handler. He's got uh, cadaver dogs. He's got bloodhounds. He's got all different kinds of dogs. And he said some of these, um, some of these dogs cost upwards into the 50000 range, $50,000 range between the training you have to do with them and the purchase. Um, you, you, you're looking at it, some of them upwards, close to 50,000 or some of them more. So he said that it's amazing that they actually risk their dogs' uh, lives by having them go out there. Um, and and they're, they're distance from these animals. So if something was to happen, sure, they have firearms on them, but you'd have to be a pretty good shot to save your dog from an alligator's mouth. You know, Paul was on with us and he talked about the death grip that these alligators have. And once they chomp down on you, it's the damage is done already. So yeah, just uh, an unbelievable amount of danger. And, and, and when I see people making statements like, Oh, they screwed up. They, you know, the dogs missed the handlers missed this one missed, you know, more so the handler is at fault in, in a mistake than the, than the actual dog itself. Right. Isn't that right, Ed? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, if the handler is not paying attention or doesn't understand what, in fact, the dog is telling them, um, they, they could uh, miss the dog's signal. Um, if the handler is distracted, uh, especially if you're running the dog in this manner where the dog is so far ahead of you, um, right. it could happen. Look, despite my best efforts at crime scenes, uh, I missed evidence. Uh, I, I couldn't find things. I'm, I knew things were there, but I couldn't find them. And, you know, exhaustive searches by myself, my partners, and then other people. And it was just frustrating that, you know, we couldn't come up with all the pieces. Yeah. I mean, these men and women want to find Brian Laundry just as bad as anybody else. You know, they, they really, they, they're out there risking life and limb. You, you, you bet your bottom dollar that they want to find him. And look, this dog is on his own out there. He's just running around looking for a scent, trying to... Uh, trying to hit on human remains. That's their job. That's their one thing that they do, you know? Um, so if, if there's nobody around to help them, like there's, there's nobody, there's no handler anywhere remotely close to this dog right now. If a gator or if, uh, some, anything grabbed him or her, it's, it's a wrap. It's a wrap mm-hmm. at this point. A uh, Jeep girl sent in a $10 super chat and she said, my friend moved to South Carolina and was trail riding her horse and an alligator chased them. There you have it, Jeep girl. Thank Mm. you for that super chat. So this is very close to the spot where Brian's laundry remains were covered. Partial skeletal uh, human skull and whatever else they had recovered, not too far from this location. But it's a great depiction of the terrain that he was discovered in. And now this is um, water since receded. Um, but at, at some point there was water here. And Ed, do you want to talk a little bit about the green grassy areas? Like you and I questioned that a little bit, right? Um, can we get into a little bit of that without getting too conspiracy theorist type? No, I mean, there, there are certain um, bushes and weeds and, and growth here that are very, very green. And that's not to say that they're not sitting in water, but um, if, if, it, if the, indigenous plant life here was we had water on top of them above them then they would have died out and been brown and not necessarily green and i consulted with a botanist about this and he said that i i was right that if the water um the plant life was underwater for any amount of time that eventually it would have died and when it receded it would have been brown brown so we do see some brown areas uh, but we do <clears throat> see a lot of green um is there a chance if, if the water recedes and the heat and heat and humidity and maybe new watering comes like from a little bit of rain that it could come back a little bit and be patchy like this, or is this indicative of possibly areas that were not completely underwater for a lengthy period of time? Again, I, like I said, showing, showing this to a forensic botanist 
um, he said that you, you're going to get patchy areas because certain areas are going to recover faster than others. Yeah, so you see, like, I'm on the left side here with the cursor. Mm -hmm. If this is all brown, and this looks like this could have been underwater. Now and you gotta under the yes, and okay. you got to understand the topography. So, uh, the, some of these spots from above, you can't tell what's higher and what's lower. I'm going to go full screen so everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. Right, so some of the areas could be the lower line that will mm -hmm. that will pull the water. Right, um, and you know, so here you see three or four, three guys here, and I'm I'm not sure if they even know where the dog is at this point. Probably hear him. Okay, the dog just came in from behind, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, so it, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, Sherilyn Schofner, thank you for the nine dollars super chat, uh, ten dollars super chat. She says, "I'm sorry if I'm rehashing. I came in late. Have they found more remains?" Now, nothing has been confirmed, but I've seen that also in the uh, rumor mill. People have been talking about this on social media, that there were more remains found. We don't know, and we do not report on rumors or anything that you know, is uh, being sp spoken about. Um, if, if the police or if uh, the FBI releases officially that information, then we will speak on it. But I'm not going to speak about um, some things, and I know that, Sherilyn, you understand this. Um, not going to go and just, you know, randomly speak about it. But now he, we have a complete area here that looks like kind of like rutted a little bit, Ed. Mm -hmm. um, this could yeah. potentially be an area where there would be lots of water pooling uh, because of the ruts and looks like some low spots right where the dog is. Yeah, it uh, looks right like now. some low spots on either side and in the center. It looks a little raised. Right. And mm -hmm. it could have been something that you'd see an alligator just kind of swamping through um, when it is completely wet and underwater. Um, I just want to quickly show just a little bit more of this and then move on. Um, but I'm not going to spend the whole stream speaking about this case, but, um, this is important. A lot of people are t still talking about this. Um, and, and I think it's important for us to see, this is a good, better look at it. I'm going to stop it here. Yeah. So you, you could potentially see where those two, these two guys are in the middle, mm -hmm. two, three guys, this whole complete area looked like, you know, where I'm swirling around with my. Uh, with the mouse could have been potentially on the water right here. Yeah, it looks low there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Bubble Girl Inspired says, Hi, Duty Ron and Ed. I deeply appreciate the both of you. Uh, and thank you so much for all you've done and continue to do for all of us. God bless you and your families. Wow. What a really wonderful message. And thank you for the $10 super chat. Bubble Girl Inspired. That was inspiring to us. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, so I just posted quickly on my, uh, community post that we are live. If you guys don't mind, please share onto your public me uh, social media platform, uh, share it out to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or whatever you got. Uh, so people will come in and catch us live. This was un uh, planned, unannounced. Uh, me and Ed just got together and said, Hey, you want to go live today? And, uh, Ed, <laughs> I gotta tell you, let me get him back on what a trooper this guy is. I message him. I call him. He's uh, on. He's kind of semi on vacation right now, uh, but he's trying to get some stuff work done at, a, at another property that he has. And um, he's like, "Yeah, let's go. You let me know when you're ready. I'm ready to rock." So thank you, Ed, for your dedication to um, this stuff. It, I hope you don't lose your fire. I want you to keep that fire, Ed. Keep it going. Oh, you got to always push forward, never backwards. Always forward. You know. There you go. Hey, there was one other thing, Ron, I wanted to talk about the dogs, um, especially because of the uh, indigenous wild boars down there. You know, certain people who hunt wild boars use dogs. Uh, not everybody that hunts boars use dogs. But when you're using a dog, they usually put a protective vest on the dog um, to protect their dog from being attacked by the boar. Because these boars are nasty. I mean, they charge you with their razor tusk and they can rip you up. Um, so again, there's no protective vest on this dog. And, you know, I'm not trying to be critical, but I'm saying, uh, I guess maybe these weren't concerns. Uh, uh, yeah, this yeah. I, I actually sent this video um, and this footage to Brian Smith because he said to me, I don't want to speak on something without seeing for myself. Because when I called him just moments before we went live, uh, Ed, and the mm -hmm. audience here, uh, this is, I'm speaking to the audience, uh, obviously everyone in the chat, uh, and Ed uh, Wallace, retired crime scene and forensic specialist. Um, he, when I spoke to him, he said, Ron, 
I, I don't think anybody with the right mind would send their dogs into here just to randomly search. Um, so we, we didn't necessarily see a ton of volunteers. They were probably ready to do it and risk it, but it definitely, um, it definitely, when he said to me, I would be surprised that any good dog handler would send their dog in there knowing the danger of that. Uh, Voice for Hope says it sounds like a death trap. And you know what? I couldn't have said that any better. I'm going to highlight that, that comment right now. So a Voice for Hope uh, is a channel member as well as a good friend. She says it sounds like a death trap. And you know what? Uh, you couldn't have said it any better. Um, so uh, here's another question coming in from a channel member, Charlene uh, Chikakati. I think I messed that one up. But she says, can cadaver dogs... Can cadaver dogs smell human remains, human bones, or just decom deco decomposing bodies? Now, Ed, I know you're going to be able to take that, but I can answer that as yes, because bones do have a certain smell to them, but I'll let Ed talk better on it. Well, you just nailed it. So, yes, the answer is yes, both. So, okay. <laughs> I, thought he, I thought Ed was going to give a little explanation, but he just... No, I mean, no, I mean what, what's to explain? It's... Uh, you, the bones do have a smell uh, as well. Plus, remember, inside the bone, there's marrow. And, right. and that's going to give off a scent as well. Uh, right. And a lot of animals will break that bone because they smell the marrow to get to the marrow to eat it. Right. I think what we're trying to say in layman's terms to everybody, that Charlene, that's a great question, by the way, and thank you for that. Uh, the answer is 100% unequivocally yes to that um they can smell but um you know because a body decomps down to a skeletal remains doesn't mean that the smell and uh the smell of death goes away it's still there and in, in some cases it's even stronger so um again um it, it, just because you have a human that's decomped down to skeletal remains and if it even if it's there for you know, okay, granted, maybe if it's there for five years, we've got a different ball game that we're talking about. But, you know, the area, the, the actually the remains as it, uh, as it liquefies and decomps and goes into the ground, that smell stays there for quite a long time. And, um, you know, again, you, you're looking for someone that's there 25 years, we have a different conversation, but that's not the conversation here. So greatly appreciate that. Great questions coming in from the um the folks watching let me let the rest of this play because this this is a great this gives us the best view of the areas and you can see some water up in the le up left upper left corner here mm -hmm. um this is, gives us a best view of where um brian's remains were recovered and and the actual um terrain this is the best view of the terrain to give you the best depiction if you will uh, let me see a little bit more in the chat. Linda uh, Petrovich sends in a message. Is it true they found six more bodies where Gabby's body was found? Yes, that is true. Um, I did look into that and I confirmed that um, there was a, a total of six. And that includes the two that the two, the couple that were killed, uh, that were shot and killed as well. So it's it's four and then two, the two girls. Um and may God continue to rest, uh, they continue to rest in peace. And, and, you know, it's just just a sad, sad situation. So um, here's another question. I'm just picking these. I'm, I'm pulling them out randomly. Has DNA been done on the marrow? We're waiting. We're waiting on that, uh, Slink, Selena. We are waiting yeah, to it's get not, word. It's, it's typically done on the bone itself, on the pulverize the bone and as opposed to the marrow. Right. And, uh, so it's... Is that it's or Thank they, you for it's, that, Ed. It's, so, it's being done. It's, we're just, we haven't gotten the results. Right, right. So it seems to me like where these guys are walking could have been potentially areas that were underwater, definitely by that brown color, and now we see it. Don't forget uh, the, the, the heat and the sun down in, in, in the south uh, part of southwestern Florida is brutal. So when, uh, when, the, when the water you know goes back and recedes, you got um, perfect a perfect storm of, you know, ground drying up and um, just you know getting dry real quick. But we saw some of these areas are kind of mucky and and mushy. But these are definitely guys from some type of either fish and wildlife game or some type of park rangers that specialize in in, in searching. Uh, but again, a little bit reckless with his animal. And I don't know, 
you know, I, I know our canine unit from the NYPD, those guys love their dogs. And I'm saying, not saying these guys don't love their dogs, but this is risky. What that what we're watching here is I know Brian is going to come on. He's going to come on with us and go, wow, you know, that is a risky uh, thing. And, you know, they do risk their lives. Uh, the animals risk their lives to to find people and to catch criminals on the on the run. But this this type of dog is not doing that. This this type of dog is going um, and searching for human remains. So let's let the rest of this go. Hi, Dawn Marie. Thank you for joining. Hi, um, S, S me. Thank you for joining. Uh, Marianne is here. Great to see you. Uh, so there's rumor. Uh, here's more. Um, let's see. Something about bones. So, okay, let me stop this here. So here we got a situation with, with if this it does ever dry out, you'd be looking at those brown patches there. Correct, Ed? Yeah, yeah. We got a question in the, uh, out of the... Uh out of our um, audience here, they, they keep asking over and over again, how long does a, a body take to skeletonize? Well, there's just too many factors to uh, honestly answer that question. It all depends on the conditions and the environment and um, where the body is, uh, indigenous wildlife, insects. There's no, there's no uh, way to quantify that. Yeah. And there's Meg Lowe. She's a good friend of mine. Um, you know, she's a great supporter. Uh, so yeah, thank you for sending that question in. Um, but yeah, there, there's no set formulation for it because it all depends on, you know, um, temperatures, exposure, underwater, on top of water, in water. Uh, Chemi chemicals, uh, yeah. buried, unburied, uh, it just indigenous wildlife, there's just too many factors. Right. And I have a, a trail cam channel that I'm following now. And let me tell you something. I watched some footage of these trail cams. I might pull it up here and show some of these people in the Florida, you know, in, in, in the reserves here in Colton Reserve. I saw one in, uh, in the Maya Kahachipi uh, Reserve. Um, it, it was scary to watch it. I was, it, it, this guy had trail cams and oh my God, uh, I don't know. Has anybody in the chat seen any of those, um, any of that footage? Uh, yeah, alligators coming up in the middle of the night, one, two o'clock in the morning, nine, eight, seven o'clock at night. Um, snakes coming through, wild boar. Um, what else did I see? Just a ton of scary stuff, man. It, it, it was, I almost thought it was going to give me a nightmare, you know? <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, because um, I was watching it and I was like, holy crap, it's not somewhere I don't want to be stuck out there. And then I watched an, um, a survivalist tell uh, talk about the most important thing is to keep your feet dry we see that from the movies and you see them talk about that in the army movies and war you know keep your feet dry and stay elevated don't stay on the ground get up on a tra tree or a branch climb up and hug a tree they, he said this is my pillow for the night i'm hugging a tree so mm -hmm. um you know it, it's just oof. yeah just scary stuff the footage and there's so many different things that could uh, harm you out here. Uh, you know, you don't know what's in the water besides leeches and there's aquatic amoebas and so forth that can flesh eating uh, amoebas, uh, things that if, you know, you wash your, get your water on you or you wash your face or something in this water and it, uh, or get splashed on and so forth. And the next thing you know, uh, you know, you, you, you have, you run into the hospital because your skin is being eaten alive. Yeah. Yeah, leeches and all this other different kinds of thing. He talked about that. But now look at this dog. This dog goes in the water here at the bottom of your screen. Yeah. He's in the water here, bottom, middle. Yeah, he's, he's not that water. deep. Right. He's probably hot and probably just trying to get his paws a little cool and maybe drinking a little. Uh, yeah. He's, well, he, he's, he's trying to track some scent. I don't, uh, you know, you can see he's got his nose down on top of the water. Right, right. And they're just following him they're just letting him go and do his thing you know mm -hmm. so yeah how many people have seen rambo the movie rambo you see they pull him out of the water and they slice a, a leech off of his uh shoulder and it just is bleeding sucking the blood off of him so and don't forget the ticks and uh you know all oh, that yeah. that's out there too i mean you can end up getting lyme disease or whatever the case may be brutal let me go back to some of these super chats real quick because a few of them passed by, and I want to get back to them uh, if I can get them. Hey, Naboo, good to see you from the south of France. Thank you for joining. Naboo, good friend. All right, here it is. Um, Alicia K. 
sends in a five dollar super chat and she says hello and thank you for that hello ed and ron duty ron duty ron and ed what or what or if dna was swapped from gabby's fingernails when will the re those results be released question mark isn't that automatic in a homicide case thank you for that question ed i'll let you take that well that that assumes that there were nails uh, left on on her body and uh, again, if they were there, they should have been uh, scraped for anything that was underneath there. Whether or not we're going to get that information, uh, I'm sure the FBI, if they if they did the scrapings, uh, already have the results, and they're not going to release it uh, right. at, to us uh, at this time. Um, who knows if they're going to release it at all? Yeah, I mean, a, a good question and an answer that we don't have definitively. It's it's anybody's guess. We don't know what they're going to release, uh, how they're going to release it. You know, and there's a question, too, that uh, came by a few times. And people are asking, will the laundry parents be charged with anything? Uh, I mean, our guess is as good as yours, but we know as law enforcement professionals, they need certain things to be in place to do that. Just because they've invoked their uh, Fifth Amendment doesn't mean that they can't be arrested. And the same thing applied to Brian, Brian Laundrie when he was still alive. Just because you invoke your Fifth Amendment doesn't mean that you cannot be arrested. So, um, again, you know, people sometimes get a little confused about that. Rose, thank you for that question. She says, at duty, Ron, it takes weeks to get the tox back after an autopsy. How is it possible that Brian was identified so quickly? Ed. Okay, well, Rose, this is anthrop. He, he was identified through odontology. His teeth were used to identify him. The toxicology will come later. Now, um, if all they have is skeletalized remains, then um, typically it becomes very difficult to do toxicology. But again, the tooth can be used to perform toxicology as well. They'll grind the teeth down and they'll do some GC mass spec analysis, that's gas chromatography, mass spectrometry analysis. They can look for opioids, uh, cocaine, and they can also look for cannabis. Yeah. So these are all possibilities uh, looking forward down the road, but it's just, you know, I, if they don't have a criminal investigation, uh, Ed, and, I, and this is me and you conversing here, if, they don't, if they're not conducting any criminal investigation anymore, uh, what's the upside to them releasing any more information? Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, they got to dot their I's and cross their T's. Um, so they have to come up with some conclusion here. I can't see how the uh, criminal investigation would just stop because, okay, now we found Brian and, and the, uh, he's dead. Um, they, they still have to come to some conclusion. Just like in the anthrax investigation, um, uh, you know, originally they had one suspect in mind, their person of interest turned out he wasn't the, the right guy. Then they uh, concentrated on another person. And then that person committed suicide before the FBI could indict them and haul them into court. But the investigation continued on for a little bit after the suicide until they were able to come out and give their conclusion uh, as to the results of their investigation. And in fact, they closed their case because they believed the suspect uh, was uh, the doctor that committed suicide. There you go. You got to just be patient, folks. Uh, Angie Davidson says, uh, sends in a $10 super chat, and thank you so much for that. Uh, anger is contagious. Smiles are contagious. Spread a smile today. Gabby would love that. Yes, and laughter too, Angie. Laughter is contagious. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, let me get up on the chat here. Um, what about a civil lawsuit? Uh, it says Ann T. Can't Gabby's family get her van back at some point? Uh, once that's released from evidence, I would say there's no reason why she, they can't get her property back. Um, you know, providing everything is documented in her name, the title, the registration, and all of that stuff, as long as it's not, you know, uh, co owned by her and Brian, um, I don't see any problem with them being able to get that back. Any thoughts, Ed, on that? Yeah, no, they should be, the family should be able to get the van back once uh, the law enforcement is uh, finished with it. But there may be some kind of probate issues. I'm not sure how all that works out, uh, right. you know, in terms of, um, you know, beneficiaries and things of that nature. Yeah, so folks like D. Irish says in the chat, I'm sure they got the van back already. Nobody knows that. I mean, that's just speculation and we don't do that. So we don't know if they got the van back. 
And you know what? Again, uh, I'm not sure what, you know, what would be the benefit of us knowing whether they got the van back or other than just us feeling better that the, that her family has her property back. Mm -hmm. um, there was also questions uh, presented to me as well uh, about Gabby's personal property that was in the laundry home. Do they get that back? Um, and I'm sure that there's a process for that as well. Um, being that the laundries are not speaking to the Petito Schmidt family, I'm sure through attorneys, they could work that out. And that's something where Bertolino and, um, the, the Petito Schmidt family's attorney would be able to work through that pretty easily, uh, if there was any property that was left there. So thank you for those questions. Cause they're great. Richella Pranzo. Great to see you. Dawn Marie. Thank you for joining great moderator and friend and channel member, uh, Black Rose 11. Thank you. I hope you're feeling better. She's been in and out of the hospital the last few days. So sending strength and prayers to Black Rose 11. I also want to send prayers to my mother-in-law. Uh, she is in the hospital and has a mass on her bladder. She's going to need surgery for uh, this Tuesday. So I'm asking everyone in the chat to please give some prayers for my mother-in-law. That's Mrs. Duty Ron's mom. She's been in the hospital almost two weeks now. And we want to send her lots of prayers, strength, and positive vibes to my mother-in-law. So thank you all for that. Um, great. Ron, Ron, DJ Joker asked a question about the bones and um, and it, whether or not the bones can help with the cause of death. And absolutely, that's why right now Brian's bones are being examined by a forensic anthropologist. And they're going to look at those bones uh, to see if they see any uh, tool marks, any... Um, marks from knives, guns, uh, ballistic damage, any uh, broken bones, any uh, signs of trauma caused by animals and things of that nature. So they can assist in the cause and manner of death investigation, uh, definitely. And it was done in Gabby's case. That's why they found the broken hyoid bone and so forth. Um, right. So, and that analysis is going to take about two weeks uh, to, to do a complete analysis of all those bones. And don't think we forgot about the anthropologist. We're still I, working on it. <laughs> right. I put the words right out of my mouth. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I figured it segue perfectly. Yeah, we are, uh, you know, in talks trying to get uh, our forensic anthropologist to come on. I have two on the hook. Uh, they say they want to be here. It's just a matter of scheduling. These are very busy people. Yeah, so folks, uh, thank you for continuing sending in the questions to judyron.com. If you're not, yet subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing consider hitting that notification bell and giving the stream a thumbs up ed and i love the comments in the comment section it takes a lot of time for us to look through them and answer so please be patient with us uh, on the comments we can't get to every single one of them but i do the best that i can to answer as many comments as possible and also, if you can, let me know the, the pens, I'm not selling them. I'm giving them away. So some people that are putting comments in the comment section, like I'd like a pen, I'm not just giving them away. I'm doing them. I'm not selling them. I mean, I'm just giving them away to certain people. So I have a list of 10 people. I'm going to mail them out on Monday. All those pens are going to go out. There's a few of the 10 who just failed to give me their address. Just I guess they won and they don't, they had buyer's remorse. They didn't want to get a duty Ron pen. So I think eight out of 10, eight out of 10 gave me their uh, addresses. So I have, I was waiting to ship them all together, but I think come Monday, I'm going to ship out the eight uh, and then we'll do another giveaway on this live stream. Ron, right. there, was a, there was a question about DNA taking 90 minutes. If it takes 90 minutes to get a profile, then why not in this case? Well, each case is different. Okay. Um, and if you can get DNA in 90 minutes, uh, you, you must have good genetic materials present to do this. You know, many people don't realize this, but uh, just a little under half the remains from 9-11 have yielded genetic markers. Okay. We still have body parts from 9-11 that have not yielded any genetic profile. We have, the, yeah, we have these body parts uh, in dry storage. And every time new uh, methods of DNA extraction uh, are validated, we then pull out these body parts and go at them again to try wow. to get them to yield the genetic information so we can make these identifications and give these parts back to their loved ones. In many cases, 
we have identified uh, body parts that we've um, already have identified previous body parts and given them back to their loved ones. Uh, but there are still thousands upon thousands of body parts that have not been identified from 9-11. It's, it's mind blowing when you hear that 20 years later, we still have uh, body parts in uh, refrigeration. Well, not uh, refrigeration, they're dry stored. They're, right, uh, okay. right, dry stored, that, yeah. correct. But for many, many years, we had those outdoor refrigerated units outside of the ME's office on Absolutely. the back side. I remember them. Uh, there was a security detail there for that, and I remember seeing them. Um, but yeah, these are all, you know, again, still there and still um, ready, willing, and able to do. Oh, this is a good shot right here. Hold on a second. I guess the chopper is probably pulling out. I want to see this. Um, this gives you a really good look at the terrain and how massive it was. Let me go full screen with this. Hold on, guys. Schmidt, I'll get to that in a second. Hold on a second. Hold good that. Quite, good question, though, Schmidt. We'll get it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Look at that. And and that's not even all of it. That's just the underbelly of the of the whirly bird. But I mean, look at the bodies of water. Look at the little patches there. This is just this is an insane amount of area um, for them to be looking for human remains. And and it, and it does have a very confusing component to it when. The Roberta and Chris Laundry just prance into the to the reserve, uh, making them making it noted that on a Monday morning they're going to go in there and search, and then boom, it takes them right to their son. So again, that 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 does that does make you things that make you go hmm, hmm. right? So yes, indeed. Hey, can yeah. we bring up Smitty's question again? Because that was an excellent question. I'm on it, brother. I'm on yeah. it. Okay, so Schmitty says, at what point is it determined that public that the public would be made aware of findings? Question mark. Inquiring minds want to know, but what is the likelihood of this? Thank you for the five dollars super chat, and what a great question, Ed. I'll let you take that. Well, I, I would suspect that if the FBI is going to close these cases, they're going to have a press conference about it. Okay, they're going to give their determination what their investigation has revealed. They're going to assign. I believe they're going to assign blame uh, in the uh, uh, murder of Gabby, and uh, hopefully we'll also get the conclusion uh, about the cause and manner of Brian's death. Yeah, there you have it. Um, Meglo, you're 100% right. My cousin, Ralph, was was identified through DNA remains. Uh, his remains were matched up to his DNA that we provided, uh, toothbrush, hairbrush, um, underwear, undergarments, and and the such. Because I brought my family to the medical examiner's office to give that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we did it at the armory. Um, the so, victim family centers that were set up at the armory. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So um, I drove my family there, and, and I went through all of that with them. And it was so it was so hard for me, a because it was my cousin, and B because I was a police officer. And I saw the a massive amount of distraught folks that were there that were missing loved ones. And it was just, it, it, it just blew me away. It made me lose my breath when I looked at the people and I saw the massive amount of people that were missing people. It, it was just like nothing else I've ever seen. And I don't think, I, I hope I'll never see anything like that again. But uh, you, you know, it tore me up every time I saw it where the, um, construction site boards, uh, you know, the, the plywood boards on construction sites filled up Pictures. with photographs of the missing. And yeah. it, ju it just tore me up every time I, I passed it. And I saw um, candles and prayers and loved ones there wailing and crying. Um, and it, I, 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 you know, broke down several times, uh, you know, caught myself crying uh, and felt their pain. And, you know, you just as a human being and, and also in law enforcement, you just want to, you know, hug them and, and try to take away all their pain. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. I know that's impossible, but you just want to try and do it. Yeah. It, it was really, really a very difficult time. And we, you know, we got through it and we'll get through anything that's thrown at us because we're America strong. So, uh, you know, uh, again, Ed, uh, you know, I, I get really, I get teared up when I, when I think about this and it just, it's just something that never goes away. Um, let me just go back quickly to the chat. 
Um, stand by. Here we go. Karen Lee says, when were you notified of positive IDs, duty, Ron? Uh, sorry. It was April of 2002. So the World Trade Center was September of 2001. So April of 2002 is when we had the third service for my cousin. First, it was a memorial that the family had. Then it was the local three electricians at the Madison Square Garden Theater. And then uh, when his remains were ID'd and then we had, the family had a third uh, funeral with including, including a burial. So yeah, it was tough. It was just difficult, but thank you for that, Karen Lee. Appreciate that. Um, let me just back it away so you guys don't have to see us up close. Um, but I do like to go, um, and switch up the screens for you. Let me see if I can, um, Ed, grab this, um, this alligator channel, this, um, hold on. Let me see if I can get it. I'm going to go full screen with you. Take some of the, take some of the questions that you see. Give me a second. All right. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, I hope the anthropologist results from the public of this piece. Yeah, we, we should be getting um, a report about the anthropological uh, analysis of Brian's remains. It's going to come when they decide to give a cause and manner of death uh, in the autopsy report because the um, pathologists couldn't do it by, by themselves. They had to reach out to um, the anthropologists to study these bones. So hopefully we'll get that information as well. I expect we will. Any other questions? Let me see. You know what? I'll just take this time um, to talk about something with you that I see a lot. Uh, when, when people formulate a uh, hypothesis about what happened, I want you to think about this. And you should all know Occam's razor. And basically, it's a scientific uh, uh, principle, if you will, that says, with all things being equal, the simplest of explanation is typically correct. So the more convoluted a hypothesis becomes, the more people that are involved, the more twists and turns the hypothesis has to take in order to come to this conclusion the more likely it is not to be accurate and not to be correct. So uh, just keep that in mind when, when you hear certain people talk about um, their hypothesis of how things occur. If it has to do this, then do that, then do this, then do this, to get to that end point, it's probably not accurate. I hope that was helpful. Excellent. That was helpful to me. I've got the cam... Uh, the this trail cam up. I want you guys to see this. This is just going to be unbelievable. Um, so let me get this up. All right, here we go. Give me two seconds, Ed. You're still full screen, by the way. Okay. You got it. You, you're 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 it right now. Yeah, yeah. I see you, Steffi. I, I understand some people still won't get it. Uh, you know. I'm All sorry, right. Kathy, for your loss. All right, I'm back, guys. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I was looking at some of this and, and some of it, some of it's kind of, uh, it might just be a little too gory. I don't want to, I don't want to get the stream demonetized. So I think it will kill it because the one that I had up had an alligator eaten a, um, looked like a possum or something came up and he snatched it right at the water's edge. But I, 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 I do want to show it, but I just don't want to freak everybody out. So I'm going to, we're going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to yield to that. Let's segue a little bit off of uh, Gabby Petito and um, Brian Laundrie for a second. And let's talk about uh, Orin and Orson West, uh, our missing boys from California City. Uh, I know we're 49 minutes into this video, but I need to speak about this because I need each and every one of you to understand what we're doing with this case. I'm going full screen with me. So um, in December of last year, uh, December 21st, California City, Orin and Orson West, and Searin Classic were reported missing by their family. Re the uh, foster, uh, adopted family who was first foster, Jacqueline Trezell West, their adoptive parents, said they went missing out of the backyard and the gate was left open and the kids got out. 
it's a, ho- a whole bunch of hogwash. I don't think they ever made it to California City. I think that those boys were uh, met their demise in Bakersfield. Uh, but it is a case that we've been following. It's almost a year. I just re-subscribed to the digital billboard and paid $1,000 again yesterday for um, the billboard on Highway 99 to go up for Orin and Orson West. So Sincere and Classics, their name has been out there thanks to generous folks like yourself, the generous people of Crime Time with Duty Run that send in donations. We have funded Lamar Advertising for over eight months. That's $8,000 towards Sincere and Classic or in North and West. It's some of the best money that I've ever sent and spent because it keeps their names alive. It keeps their faces out there. And um, because the case is not being spoken about doesn't mean that things aren't going on behind the scenes. Just last month, um, Equisearch Midwest went over to Bakersfield and into the Kern River and did um, uh, drone footage, and drone uh, searches. They did grid pattern searches and gathered up 4,400 images and thousands and thousands of videos, man hours of videos uh, for the uh, homicide investigators and for the investigators on the case. So stuff is going on behind the scenes that you people and all of us, our civilians, won't know about. But it is happening, and it is something that we need to continue to talk about because the one-year mark is coming up, December 21st. While we're all going to be preparing, those of us who celebrate Christmas, are going to be preparing for the holiday season, and these boys are outstanding. We don't know where their remains are. It's just horrific. It's a hor- horrifying scene. Um, it's 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 a tough pill to swallow. Look at uh, what uh, what Roro is going through in the biological family. So, without further ado, I want to play some of the most updated and recent um, pieces of media on this. This comes out of News Nation. So, I'm going to play this piece for you guys, so you those of you who are here and don't know about this case can see it and understand it. Let me just make sure I got volume first before I go. Brothers okay, vanished from the backyard of All their right, family home just days before Christmas. That was 10 months ago. And since then, the search for the then three, three and four I'm going to go to the beginning. Boys in California. It is part of our continuing Missing in America series here on Prime. Oren and Orson West, brothers, vanished from the backyard of their family home just days before Christmas. That was 10 months ago. And since then, the search for the then three and four-year-old boys has been relentless. This nation's Nancy Liu is digging into their case and the investigation into the, their disappearance. And she is joining us live tonight with their story. Nancy. Marnie, a prayer gathering is underway right now here in Bakersfield because today marks exactly 10 months since Oren and Orson West were reported missing. But even before, these young boys, these toddlers, they had gone through a lot of change in their lives, much of it in foster care. Their most recent stop was allegedly at a home in California City. That's the billboard that we sponsor. Hold on, let me go back to that. It's not nothing that you want to just... Hold on, let me go back to that because this is the billboard that we, Crime Time with Duty Ron, we, because of the generous support that I get from, there's three really major generous supporters that support the bulk of that $1,000 every month, but there is dozens, I'm talking dozens of you who send in $5 or $10 for the boys or $3 for the boys. And you send it to me and you tell me to put it towards the boys. This is where the money goes. So let me go back to that, um, that spot here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me back it up so we could see the board. All right, there it is. So this is what we sponsor and it's up on highway 99. And that company Lamar is the company that we spend this money through. So I'm going to let the rest of this play. Not a good feeling. It's not nothing that you want to just sit up and think about all the time. You got to make yourself think about something different, you know, positive, something happy, something better. Biological father Charles Pettis is racked with heartache. In an exclusive interview, Pettis talks publicly for the first time about the mysterious disappearance of four-year-old Oren and his three-year-old brother, Orson. They might not remember me, but I remember them. And I also... 
Like, it don't matter how long it takes, how hard it's going to be. I will never give up. It's been 10 months since the brothers were reported missing from this home in California City. It was around 5 p.m. on December 21st, and Christmas was close. Adoptive father, Trezell West, says the boys were outside that afternoon playing with a family dog named Chalk. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea to they go outside and play with Chalk on the back patio. West claims he checked on the boys when he went out to get firewood. Came in the house, saw them there, went in the house, I came back out, I didn't see them there. I immediately went back in, asked my wife, did you see the boys? She said, no, they should be outside playing with chalk. I didn't see them, so I came back outside and I started searching my backyard. I searched the whole thing. The boys were gone, and Wes says he realized he had left the back gate open. The West spoke with local media two days after they called police, but they have not commented publicly since. I don't want you guys thinking we, we didn't try. We actually we looked tried. before we called we police. Looked, yes. Police were called around 6 p.m. Soon after, the neighborhood and the West home were thoroughly searched. The West eventually had their two biological and two other adoptive children removed from their care. And in March, Bakersfield police took over the investigation investigation due to more resources and family ties on both sides. It's a puzzle and there are key pieces that are missing uh, and we are using every legal means to figure out what happened and get the, the, the facts and circumstances behind what occurred. Police admit to withholding over 90% of the evidence in this case to protect their investigation. And while the West aren't speaking with the media, police say they remain and they said they're holding, withholding 90% of their evidence in this investigation. What does that tell you? As well they should. Um, that, that tells me that they probably are pointed in a direction. And um, in most cases like this, it points out a family member uh, from, from my experience with these types of investigations. So if they're holding back information like this, they, they probably have a suspect. Yeah, or two. Yes. Um, yeah, this whole case stinks to high heavens, but it's, it's, it's really, it, it gives me great confidence when I hear them say that they with, they're withholding 90% of the evidence because they want to use that to put the pieces of the puzzle together and get the legal amount, the, the amount of legal evidence that they need to affect a lawful arrest in the disappearance of these kids. And I'm not losing hope that they will um, eventually bring someone to justice for this with or without their bodies. Um, so let's let the rest of this roll. In contact with the West. It's one of those situations where you open a door and that door leads to another hallway, which leads to another hallway, which leads to another hallway. So it's, it, we haven't reached the end of our journey yet. The boys were born as sincere and classic. Their biological parents lost custody in 2018 due to a suspect leg injury, which relatives insist was not inflicted. They took my family, they took my life away from me. My kids is my life, that's my family. Biological cousin Rosanna Wills is among the loved ones convinced the boys were never in Cal City. The West had moved into the home in September and reported the boys missing just three months later. Something happened. Something happened. There's Roro. The West have moved away, but are said to return periodically to check on the home. They have not attended any of the prayer gatherings or recent searches. But we're the only ones out here, including the supporters, who are pushing for the boys. We haven't heard nothing from their side of the family, the adoptive family. There is a hefty reward in the case, and it's hoped more national awareness will bring the boys home. So many other kids have coverage, but these two boys did from day one. I don't feel like they're deceased. I feel like somebody has. Them, and it might not be in California, but I just, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> I have children, I have three. Let me tell you something about that Keisha. Keisha is a beautiful woman. She's so passionate about this, and she is, I've had so many conversations with Keisha. She is, her heart is 100% in this thing. And um, I send her a lot of love and prayers and strength. And now we're going to hear from Jennifer Nobles, our good friend who got me into the whole funding of the digital billboard. So Jennifer, she, she funded the first $2,000 for this board. And then I took it over after that with um, the funding and the generosity of all of the great people of crime time with duty Ron. So this case is from Bakersfield, California. Uh, for those of you who are not knowing what, what went on with this, but this is two boys that vanished from their 
family's home on December 21st of 2020. And um, every, you know, most people have children. Most people, you know, we, we don't expect anybody's child to go missing and just disappear. Jennifer Nobles has generously made sure that billboards and banners featuring the boys are widely disseminated, even though the only available photos are well over a year old. Even if they're a little bit old, I hope there's some feature, you know, that they see on their on their face, their nose or their lips or their eyes or anything that just stands out to them that makes them question like, you know, could that be, could that be, you know, one of the boys? Could it be just possibly? There is a secret witness line just for this case. That number is 661-322-4040. The family and Bakersfield police implore anyone with information from before or after the boys disappeared to please call. Marnie? Just vanished. Nancy, police aren't saying too much about their investigation all these months later. Can we read anything into what they have revealed and shared so far? Well, there is a clear indication. The switch from Cal City Police to Bakersfield Police indicates that the heart of the case is here. Cal City is 70 miles away. Did something happen here in Bakersfield before that family moved to Cal City? We were out there yesterday. We talked with a neighbor who said, he never saw those boys in never. Cal City. He also never heard children playing in that backyard. You would hear children squealing or laughing or talking. Isn't that amazing, Ed? Yes. The neighbor, the neighbors said they never have seen with their own eyes kids and never heard any kids. Don't forget, I know that you weren't on this case with me. There was a total of six children, including these two that went missing. Mm -hmm. They had two other adoptive and these two that went missing, and then two of their own. How how do they get away with that and are still walking free right now? That's the crazy part about this. Uh, I want to just mention uh, a Voice for Hope sent in uh, $139, $140 super chat. Uh, thank you so much for the generosity. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, also, Jamie Johnson sent in a $10 super chat. Thank you for that, Jamie. I'm just going to go and catch all of these so I can give them a recognition and thanks and praise. All of this uh, fundage will go towards all cases that we cover and uh, funding. Uh, Valerie uh, Byford sends in a $25 super sticker, super chat. Thank you so much for that. I greatly appreciate that. Canadian. Uh, Schmitty sends in another one. Nothing contributes so much to tranquilize the minds of steady purpose. Thank you, Ron, Ed, and all law enforcement for having the steady purpose. Much respect. Thank you. Wow. What a great statement, Ed. I know you you love that. That's spot on, spot on. Amen to that, Schmitty. Thank you. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. KNS, thank you for becoming a channel member. Yeah, guys and girls, please, if you can, consider becoming a channel member. Channel memberships uh, are as low as $2.99 a month. That's $34 for a whole year. Um, you can uh, go on YouTube and in some instances, they'll give you 40% off if you pay for the whole year. So you would get it for 40% off that $34. So go and look and explore becoming a channel member. Just support me through Patreon, support me through um, all of the things, any way that you can, uh, even a dollar, it helps. We repurpose 90% um, of the fundage. The other percentage goes towards me paying the 1099 at the end of the year. But uh, we were able to send in $1,500 to uh, the battered woman's shelter in Tampa. And I'm going to continue to do stuff for the boys. I'm going to find a place in Bakersfield, uh, domestic violence uh, shelter, and we are going to donate to them and do a fundraiser for them. And we'll do something here in the New York metro area. I just got to work on trying to find out who, what's, where, where would be the best needed. Where are these where are these shelters or these uh, domestic violence centers that need our help? And I want to help them. Um, another thing too, Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern, we are going to do a domestic violence special. This is going to be uh, surrounding Gabby Petito and uh, Brian Laundry, uh, But we are going to talk generally uh, with uh, Donna Roman. She is a retired captain from Essex, New Jersey. She 
has been a victim herself of domestic violence, of sexual assault, and a whole bunch of host of all, a whole host of other um, issues that she had that she's dealt with. But she is has her own uh, nonprofit that she runs that will um, give you guys the best information that you can on domestic violence and resources. So you're not going to want to miss that. Ed and I are going to be doing that 9 p.m. on Monday. We also have our forensic anthropologist somewhere down the road. We have that lined up. We're not forgetting about that. It's just it's just so hard to get these great guests to commit to us. But Sincere and Classic, Orin and Orson West, is near and dear to my heart. I'll never stop talking about the boys. I'll never stop bringing you um, information and experts. If you look at my playlist for Orin and Orson West, Sincere and Classic, 46 or more videos I've created with Mark Class from the Class Kids Foundation. Um, the um, EquiSearch, Tim Miller, we spoke about it. I brought on Barbara Butcher to speak about it. I have spoken with so many experts, and so uh, I brought a helicopter pilot on, retired from the NYPD. Um, we, we did the canine uh, special. We did a forensics special on it. There's so many questions and so much to talk about. We are going to go back and Ed and I are going to reopen that case and revisit it and look at it from the start to the begin to the end here. Well, there is no end yet. We're going to look at it from start to where we are present day. And we're going to open that case file up and we're going to look at it and revisit it, it, it and go over each individual, uh, each individual step that we've gone through in this process. And we're never going to let this go. We're never going to let it go until we get to uh, some answers or we get someone uh, held accountable and brought to justice for the, the the boys because they're missing and we need to know what happened to them. And like I said, even if we don't find their remains or if we don't find them where they are, somebody has to be brought to justice. And if you haven't seen my videos, I encourage you to go over to my playlist and look at the playlist on this. We covered it extensively and we're going to continue to cover it. Uh, Ed, any any other words for the, for the troops? Yeah, well, there were a couple of questions I'd want to hit real quick, and they built based on anthropology. One was about scattered remains, and if the remains were scattered uh, far and wide from um, where the main portion of Brian's body was recovered, would they do DNA on all of those bones? Well, first, they're going to inventory those bones and see how many bones are present, meaning are these bones numbering one person or multiple people? If you have two pelvics, yeah. obviously, that's two people. So then you would have to then do DNA on, on the bones. Well, they'll try to match up the bones. They'll try to put the pieces of the bones together to form a human skeleton and see if everything is matching. And they also, when they look at the bones, they take measurements, they determine sex, they try to make a determination on race and see if all of those things are jiving. Uh, if they're not jiving, if there's some kind of mix and match going on here, they'll do the DNA on, on the bones to ID uh, how many human remains or how many persons that they're potentially looking at. Uh, the next question, I saw somebody wrote that it was Brian Laundrie's lawyer who hired the forensic anthropologist. It's, isn't that a conflict of interest? The forensic anthropologist that is currently working on, the, on these bones that were recovered was hired by the District 12 Medical Examiner's Office. Now, the family can hire their own anthropologist and they can hand, also hire their own uh, pathologist but they won't get to look at uh, these bones until after the analysis is done by the medical examiner's anthropologist. Okay, so currently the um, lawyers, if they did hire an anthropologist, I'm not aware of that, uh, but uh, they won't get a shot at those bones until after the forensic anthropologist who was hired by the medical examiners has completed their analysis. Thank you for that, Ed. And Annie, I don't think that uh, the probability is high that it will come back, that none of those bones come back to Brian. I, I, I really, you know, uh, again, they could be somebody else's remains. Um, that's a possibility. But anything that's recovered in that general area from that day or from days following in that general vicinity, the chances are high that it will be uh, positive for uh, back to Brian. Uh, I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, so the Wesley Baggers sends in, this hurts me so much. I could never have kids, but I have been a nanny. I love children so much. Prayers for the children that are in bad homes. Amen to that. There's so Amen. many. 
there's so many of us out there that want to adopt and or have children and can't have them. And you got people that are sick that are out there doing this kind of crazy stuff to our children. And all the crime scenes that I've been to, it was always the children crime right. scenes that got to me. The needless deaths where the uh, mother's boyfriend punches a, a baby in the gut because they spilled milk at breakfast. And then over the course of several days, the, uh, the baby bleeds to death internally because the gallbladder was, uh, I mean, or the, um, the aorta was severed and they didn't take the baby for uh, um, medical treatment uh, or other cases in the Bronx where I had uh, babies uh, dead in a closet in Tupperware that had been sitting there for months. Uh, they, they're, you know, killed by their, their um, family and just left there. Uh, I mean, they, they really got to me when I saw that stuff. Terrible, terrible. All right, I'm going to go full screen because we're going to wrap it up. I want to give away a couple of pens right now. Let's do it. All right, some happy hashtag, stuff. Hashtag duty, Ron. We got to segue into some happy stuff. I'm going to give away um, as many as I can here today. So only one entry. You can't be, if you put in it five times, you're going to be spamming my chat. So don't do that. One person, one entry. If you put it in five times, it, you, you, you're going to be removed. So hashtag duty, Ron. I'll put it in the chat right here and you just put it in just, just as this. So let me, I want to get my entry in. Ed, you want to get in on it? Oh, no, no. Give you, it to the folks. You won't win any, anyways, and neither will I. The conflict of interest. I, I, exactly. <laughs> I have to show everybody. Hashtag duty, Ron. Not booty, Ron. Not with an F. Not with a do, D-O-O. -O. You got to do it exactly that way. Hashtag duty, Ron. Who wants to win a pen by a show of hands? There's only five entries right now that I see so far. Six. The number's going up. Uh, it should be going up. It, it must be on delay because I see a bunch of hashtag duty runs in the chat. Um, so let's get Ed and I back on because this is exciting. I love this. Um, how could that be that there's the, um, how come there's only six entries here? Uh, something's wrong. Let me see. Do you want the space between the duty and the Ron, or how does it work? Just hashtag duty, Ron. Just all one word like that. All one word, folks. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. It's going to build. All right. Here we go. Let's get it on the screen and do some, uh, we'll do some drawing uh, for some winners here. This could be fun. Uh, I only got another three minutes, so we're only going to be able to probably do one or two. So I just cycled it through. And let's let it roll. Here we go. Spin the roulette, Leo. It's going. It's going. Got my pen ready to write it down. Who's going to be the winner? Rose. Rose. Rose is the winner. All right. I'm writing it down. Rose, congratulations. You are a winner of Duty Ron. A pen from Duty Very nice. Very nice. Congratulations, Rose. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Let me remove that from the board. So we're going to get one of these out to you. Just go on to dutyron.com and send me your address. And we will come on. Pull back, pull back. It's the lighting. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Pull back a little bit. And you got it right there. Okay. Dutyron.com pen. And um, we're going to get that right out to you. So thank you and congratulations to Rose. Let's want to do one more. Ed, should we do one more? Yeah, do one more. Do one more. It's not fair to just do one. It's a, it's a Saturday. Come on. Okay, here we go. This is exciting. <laughs> I'm just up the road from Atlantic City. I feel like I'm gambling. Let's see. Let's see who's winning. Again. Oh, wait. No, no. We got to do it again. Got to roll yeah, again. Why is this only showing that nine people are entered here? There's like hundreds of people putting in hashtag duty, Ron. Uh, let me try it again. Let me refresh this whole thing. Hold on a second. Something went wrong here because it only says I have nine people entered. So let me, yeah. let me read. You can't win twice. Let me do it again. Okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, that's not, you can't win twice. Hashtag. Yeah, now this is updated. Here's 131 entries. All right. All right, I'm going to let it build for a minute. Yeah. I just did it again, so you guys can do it a double time. You could do it twice. Rachella, try again. Yeah, do it again, Rachella. It's it's building. I'm watching it. My wife's stomping her feet because we have somewhere to go. So. Uh oh. 
Yeah, the misses are stopping her feet at 30 rounds, so I'm getting... Uh, Kubi says it's rigged. <laughs> it's not rigged. Trust me. It's just technology sucks. That's it's all the fun. algorithm. It's the algorithm. The algorithm <laughs> sucks. Princess Michelle is in it. Patty's in it. Wow. All right. So has everybody put it at least once in the chat? Don't put it more than once. All right. This one is not rigged because it, it just keeps climbing. The numbers are going up. The numbers are going up. So I think everyone's in there. I think we got it. All right, just got on. All right, and whoever is just getting on, put in hashtag duty, Ron, as you see in the chat, uh, and we will make it all one word. Don't put duty and then space Ron. Uh, Babylon, correct that. No, some Robin, you wrote Diddy Ron. Yeah, you got to do it right. Just do it slow. There's nothing. There's nothing for you to. Um, there's nothing to to you know to rush through it. All right. So while I'm speaking, I just saw somebody remind me. You said you were going to speak about Summer Wells. Don and Candace Wells, the parents of Summer Wells, the missing little girl from um, from Tennessee, uh, June fifteenth of this year, they're going on Doctor Phil. <laughs> I don't know; it's going to be a shit show. Uh, Doctor Phil, Don and Candace Wells went on Doctor Phil. I don't know why, but they did it. Um, they, they're going to get shredded there. It's going to be a shit show. Uh, so tune in for that. That's about all that I have new for um, the Summer Wells case. I know law enforcement and EquiSearch is uh, Dave Raider and his, and his crew are waiting to go back there. They're itching to go back there. Um, but, you know, that's what they're doing. Why? Well, how is that going to help them find their daughter? Uh, and, and, and to me, it's just a, a whole bowl of, of, of wrong, a whole bowl of wrong. I'm not going on um, Dr. Phil if my kid's outstanding somewhere. I'm going to be looking for my kid. I'm not going on TV. It just, just, just seems just a little harsh to, to do that. I don't know. What's your take on that, Ed? Yeah, I agree. Um, I, more, stay cl- I stay clear of people like that. Yeah, it's, it's, there's more constructive things to do uh, with your time uh, than to go and get flown into California or wherever the hell he films a show. And do a show about your daughter i mean they, they shouldn't be looking at the limelight they should be looking for their daughter you shouldn't be looking for fame and fortune you should be looking for your daughter so shame on you guys all right here we go 194 entries let's get it to 200 and then we'll pull uh we'll pull the string and my wife is knocking on the she's knocking her feet she's like come on we gotta go all right 95 yeah i'm gonna get i'm gonna get mrs duty ron's gonna She's gonna give it. She's gonna give me the business. Yes, Geraldine says it's a joke. I agree. It's a joke. So it, it, they're gonna. It's gonna be a shit show. It's gonna be a total shit show. Anyways, here we go. One hundred ninety six entries. Let's go full screen because I like the. And I got to get some music for it. So when it does, yeah, it, you got to get a roulette wheel. We're gonna get a roulette wheel or some kind of music. All right, ready to go. Let's say. Let's see. By a, a show of hands, who wants me to press the draw button? Press a one in the chat if you want the draw. Press a two if you want me to wait for the number to climb. Press a one in the chat if you want me to press the draw button. Press a two in the chat if you want me to wait. I know people are going to be like, one, just get it on. Let's go, yeah. dude. You're on. You're going to get your ass kicked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no here, domestic violence. No domestic violence. Yeah, I don't want to be a victim. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, wow. it's flying now. Yeah, buddy. Who's it going to be? I saw Princess Michelle's name in there. Plan, Plan B, B John. John. I know he's out of the, they're outside the country. Mm-hmm. So Plan B, John, congratulations. Wow. Look at that confetti. Calm down. I'm a sailor. I've been worse. I've seen worse. Mm-hmm. All right. There we go. Plan B, John, congratulations. All right, guys, I got to get running. Remember, all of these missing person cases, especially when it involves children and when it involves anybody, these are very, very difficult things to talk about, but we try to cover it from a police perspective. Please consider subscribing to this great community because you guys are, are what makes this great. So I thank you for the replay viewers, the, the live and active chatters, the folks who gave Super Chat the people who won the pens, Rose and John, Plan B John, send me email on dutyround.com. Let me know your address. Uh, Robert Vogel, great to see you. That's Michelle's better half. Michelle's going to kill me for that. 
Uh, much love and respect to each and every one of you. As I end all of these, God bless the world. God bless the United States of America. And God bless each and every one of us here in the chat and all victims of crime and their families across the nation, across the globe. Ed, on behalf of yourself and myself, I want to wish everyone a good weekend, whether it's Saturday, Sunday, depending on where you are watching in the world. Thank you on behalf of Ed Wallace and myself. We'll see you on Monday night. Be there or be square, 9 p.m. Peace and love from New York and Joyzy, right? Joyzy. Joyzy. <laughs>